I have never been accused of half-assing a hobby. And with that in mind, I'm going to do another one of these. Um, I'm specifically going to do a second one for uh, one reason. Somebody reached out to me and informed me that there is, at least that we were able to find, one retailer that sells non-black versions of this frame. They have a gray one and a, not FTE, but Desert Tan, I believe it was called. Um, I specifically went with the gray one. Um, the reason being is they informed me that the gray ones in this uh, particular frame brand are super light colored. So, as you can see, that is really light colored gray. Okay, why is that something that excites me? Because the best dyeing, and when I say dyeing, I mean like RIT dyes. Uh, if you don't know what that is, R-I-T um, dye. You can buy it at hobby stores, um, fabric stores. Um, look up online. There's guys uh, dyeing frames with RIT dye. Now, the golden, whatever, unicorn of frames for dyeing was the um, now discontinued white polymer 80 frame. And it took dye well because it was, well, white. Um, when they discontinued those, the people now dye the gray ones and the FDE ones from polymer 80. However, depending on which of those frames you use, it does impact the color of the dye that, um, that you've chosen. So what you see on the bottle is not necessarily gonna be what you get because the base that you're dyeing impacts the color as well. Okay, so why am I so excited about light gray? Well, my hypothesis being, I'm going to get the least amount of um, color change um, out of the lighter color frame that I use. And since I'm specifically going to try something fairly vibrant, um, I was excited about the idea of using a very light color. I also thought uh, from the stuff that I've seen that the grays tend to import less warmth, for lack of a better term, onto the final color than the, the FDE tan realm of things. So that's what I'm up to. I also uh, learned from watching other people, because again, this is not my invention here. Um, I also learned that if you dye these frames, the dye doesn't go super deep. It's not surface level from what I can tell, even though I've never done it myself, but it's not surface level, but it's, it's not super deep either. Um, there appear to be two types of dye people use. Um, one is the just standard RIT dye, and I know from one person's article that um, they had a punch that they were using to push out the, the rear rail pin on a dyed P80 frame, and it slipped and it scratched the frame, and you could see the white frame again. So with the normal RIT dye, um, it's really surface level, although they had some beautiful results. Um, a lot of people, therefore, have started using RIT dye more, one word, D-Y-E-M-O-R-E, and that is a dye specifically formulated for dyeing synthetic fibers, because again, these are clothing dyes, um, and apparently those do better on the, the frames because they are obviously a synthetic material. Um, let's talk about my game plan and what I'm going to be trying to achieve here, and then we can obviously follow along and see if my game plan holds up uh, over time. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to save some of my cutoffs, these little tabs and stuff from the center here as much as I can take. I'm going to save that material because I'm going to dye that first and I'm going to actually sand it and mic it to see just how deep the dye takes in uh, these frames. And that's important to me because I'm actually going to stipple um, the raised uh, sections after dyeing. 
And the hope is that I, I can dye this, I, my plant is green. My hope is that I can dye this a vibrant green color and then come back and stipple these areas, the three on the sides and then the back strap and the three on the front, uh, stipple those areas and have basically where the, the iron squishes the plastic, the low spots will show the gray again is the hope. And then any squished out plastic, the highs, will still be green because the dye's not going anywhere. It's just being moved around a bit. So, again, the hope is I get some nice, cool, half green, half gray um, amalgam here that adds a cool look. Um, other things that I have in mind, if I don't love the green, if it's too vibrant, um, I might try the rubber band plastic bag tie-dye. Um, writ dye method that I've seen some people use to cool effect and that way I have like a, a green and brown duo mix which then I get gray poking out in the uh, stippled areas so that that we might do depending on how I like the green um, and then the other thing we might do is if I stipple it and I really don't like the result and it's ugly I might just finish the stippling and re-dye it uh, to fill in color on the areas that are now gray again uh, but that's the game plan. I'm going to go build the frame so that it's uh, got all the holes and everything sanded and ready to go. Um, and we will come back when it's actually ready to, you know, die. Clean it up real good with dish soap and a toothbrush. Any place that you don't clean up and there happens to be dirt or oil or anything left, it will not take the dye. It does not list how much color to put in, so I did about a third of the bottle in this um, disposable casserole pan. It has about eight cups of water in it. That's what it took to cover the frame. Um, it also mentions on the bottle to use some dishwashing detergent, so I did a squirt in there. I haven't seen many other people doing that on their videos, but I'm gonna give it a go since the bottle says to. It's starting to get there. The package says to keep the water above 200 degrees, but obviously you want to keep it under boiling, so that's a pretty tight area. So I do have a thermometer. You can see it up there in the top right in here, and I'm going to throw it in right as it's about 200, and then just monitor to keep it even. And in she goes. Um, I'm going to be flipping it around and moving it uh, for however long you keep it in there. I'll let you know at the end how long you keep it in so you can see the color and understand the length of time it took. We are about five minutes in, and um, I'm using a fork here and there to move it around. Doesn't seem to have taken much yet. A little bit, but not a lot. Here we are at 10 minutes. The light's making it seem like it's still really gray, but it's actually quite green to the naked eye. I don't know why the light's making it look like that. But after 10 minutes, we definitely have some color getting taken up, a decent amount of it. Um, pretty happy so far. I am, the, however, moving it around quite a bit, and I'm generally flipping it over every couple of minutes to the other side, because I don't love the idea of it sitting directly on top of where the burner is. The water does seem to be cooler than the, the edges of this thing. Here we are at 20 minutes. I'm gonna take a picture, though, because again, the video is not doing justice to how dark it's gotten. This is the result after 30 minutes of dying. It's pretty dang uh, green. The one thing I will say that caught me off guard is where textures are, it absorbs differently. So these were the sections where there was uh, sanding. And I'm sure this is gonna draw, when it dries up fully, this channel is gonna look even um, matter. But the channel's still a little bit wet. But as it's dried, the sections that had sanding done to them, even if they were polished up, really show up like highlighter. Um, and that includes this tiny little section over here that my finger got a little super glue on it when I was working the, uh, the channel shim and I got it on there. And so I actually sanded that up to 1200 grit and you can definitely see it absorbed differently there than the rest of the frame. 
very odd. And then this over here, I don't know what this was, but you can actually see it absorbed a little differently there too. And that's uh, not anything that I did, that's just how it absorbed. So it's not a wholly predictable process. Experiment time. So this is one of the tab cutoffs that I kept and I threw into the dye vat. It died for, if anything, longer than um, the frame because I couldn't really find it until I dumped out the water. So it sat during the, the cooling of the vat as well. So we're gonna mic this and we're gonna sand it and mic it again and see how much uh, it takes to get rid of the dye. The thickness is a very consistent 80 thou. And we started to hit gray at 77 thou, so it really does not go very deep at all. There is the edge that I just miked where it was 77 thou, and we have definitely hit back to the gray color. A little bit more testing. So that little area that I scraped up with a knife that was with an exacto blade and you can see it definitely got through to the gray so if it gets cut or really chunked on um, it's definitely going to show through but those two little scratches near my fingers that was done with the little tips of my calipers to simulate okay well what if it just gets scratched or lightly abraded there you have it the result so you can still see the green around the tight pattern stippling. Um, I did all the usual spots.